the book of uh, Acts 10. And I think I'm going to start a little above what I usually do. I'm going to start up here at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of person. Ain't that good? That God don't look at you above me and he don't look at me above you. But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. Every nation. There's one thing about it. God, uh, he has no pets. You know, there's a scripture said, strive to enter the straight gate for many will try. not be able that's probably when Jesus comes I don't know it's probably when Jesus comes but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him so that shows you that God ain't just talking about Jews and he's not just talking about some over, over yonder in the Middle East 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth. He's talking about us today. But the words which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. You know, if we could ever come to the realization that Jesus is Lord, and there is no other Lord. If we come to the realization that Jesus said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life and no man can come to the Father except or by me or through me. See, so we're just religious as a whole. But we haven't got what the church used to have. We haven't got what the church had when I first came in. I have to go over yonder. I have to go over yonder to these what you call heathen countries. What I used to call heathen countries. To find people that nearly about it that blind that God opened our eyes. That legs are grow. Even we've seen the time we prayed over there for people who had artificial legs and and for some reason it would turn into a real leg. It happened in Birmingham uh, some years ago. It happened in three times uh, uh, in, in America. It, it has happened in Guatemala. Thirteen dead people raised down in, in Guatemala and maybe Honduras uh, along in the years I spent down there. He's still that same God. It's just that we're not the same America when old Roberts started and Billy Gr uh, and, 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 and you know uh, William Branham, but Billy, his, his name was, they called him William, but his name was really Billy. Uh, William Branham come on the scene. And the old Roberts and A.E. Allen, when that great move came at the middle of the 20th century, uh, you know, we're not the same people that when Jesus walked in my room on that little hospital bed, and I was 11 years old and said, I'm Jesus. Come to hear you. I stayed in the hospital for six years. Was 16 or 17 operations. Mama never, never let him ever take my leg. And grew my leg and put a bone in a foot and all that restored it. Had a hang leg. He's still that same God. And told me he had to work me till I got older. Of course, I didn't know what he meant 
My mom's people were country music, and that's the way I went. But God stopped that when I was in my teens, maybe 18, summers long, and I was. Well, the next, in 24 hours, I'd been in Nashville at the Grand Ole, at the Opry. But a voice came to me and said, go to church and get saved. And I went to hell for about 30 seconds and come out. And my suit was soaked and maybe a minute. And the Lord said, that's where you're going if you're going up there. So I ain't been up there. Well, I did later, but not for that reason. I got invited and two or three times sung gospel, but didn't stay Went to a room and left. I wouldn't stay out there with them. I love country music, but it's got to be gospel. Less the flat and some of them. I've won them to the Lord and others. You know, I, I won that God that they found on the road the other day up there. And I won him, but he went back. And that's when they found him on that road, but dead, naked, full of drugs. I hope he... Th they pulled him out of it. I hope he thought about how he got right with God and served God a while, but got, got, you know, I hope he got another change. But you know, Jesus is still God. He loves us all. I said, he loves us all. And he sent me a few times in them places to get people saved, to pray for somebody, but not to be entertained. You know, we, we, we got to go out there somewhere and, and uh, in the world. We just can't run around here. Uh, we got to sh show the world there is a righteousness. You know, some people, they won't have nothing to do with the world, but we got to, to be a light to the world. If we don't, we can't be a light to the world sitting on the front row in church every day. How many know what I'm talking about? You got to be a light to the world when you get out trying to be a Christian out trying to, uh, in a restaurant. Being a Christian out trying to in a, uh, in, in a, uh, a store buying something. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ the Lord of all that word I say unto you which was published throughout all Judea beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nathos with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that was oppressed of the devil God hadn't he hadn't took away the anointing. We can be anointed. You can be anointed. It don't mean that everybody's going to preach. But you know, some of you can't pray no more. You pray a little prayer and, and nothing gets in it and you end it. But I've known of people that never preach a message in life get into intercessory and stay in prayer sometimes two or three hours standing in the gap and, and breaking out revival through prayer. A little sweetheart, my wife, bless her heart, she'd stay on her knees sometimes four and five hours in travail, praying, praying for revival, praying for me, praying for Lord to help me to do better and to, and to, to get closer and to have more of God to help people better. Now we are witnesses of all these things which he had both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slayed and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after his resurrection. See what he said? How God anointed Jesus of the Nathers with the Holy Ghost and with power. If Jesus had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost with power, him being God himself in the flesh, looked like to me that had been enough. But Jesus had to be anointed. Then we got to be anointed. We can't do it without him. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Where's the power at today? Jesus, when he called his disciples, 
in Matthew 10, Luke 9, Luke 17, he commissioned them and said, I give you power. To what? Cast out devils. To heal the sick. To raise the devil, I mean to raise the dead. <laughs> about what everybody's doing. Raises the devil. <laughs> Amen, know that. Man, I don't see no dead. Amen, about everybody raising the devil. <laughs> you cut that out, Sister Turla. Preach to me about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, no, we got to, uh, th this is Bible. Jesus called his disciples and him, and he gave them power. You know, people think, oh, that's power. That ain't power. That's the Holy Ghost quickening your body. Power is to cast out devils. Power is to open blinded eyes. Power is to unstop deaf ears. We was in Birmingham in 61, and they got a deaf music school at Tyler Degler, Alabama down there. We was there five or six weeks. They heard on the radio and, and the news, Tyler Degler maybe 40, 50 miles from Birmingham. Over the period of time we were there, everybody in that deaf mute school was brought to that, uh, plus others. I think something like 200 was healed in that meeting. But every one of them deaf mutes was brought over there at that time at that deaf mute school, was healed and took them back and had to teach them languages. A deaf mute school in India that had 400. We prayed for 200 of them one Sunday till about 1 or 2 o'clock. And every one of them spoke and heard. We prayed for the other 200 mass, and they said they were healed. They had to teach them that language. God is still the same as he was when the Bible said, go tell John. John said, are you he that should come? When John heard when he's in jail, so see y'all talk about me because I was in jail. Well, John was in jail, and I don't believe he's in hell now. But anyway, no, do you? Nowadays, nobody can get out here. I've been in jail several times, but always for the gospel. I've been threatened to be hanging. I said, well, get it over with. <laughs> Don't, don't sit around here and tell me, but God's always some reason spared me. But John heard in prison the, the works of Christ. And some of John's disciples came to see him before they behead him. He said, I want you to go back and make sure that this man sent his disciples over there to see that Jesus is doing what he said he was going to be doing. Raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out devils, cleansing the leprosy. They came back and told John. He was ready then for them to go ahead and, and, and get him out of the picture. Because John heard him praying, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead was raised. And he sent some of his disciples, I want to know for sure this has happened. Praise God. Then when he did, he said, well, I'm now ready to be offered. I'm now ready to get it over with. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, Hebrews said, Paul said in Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, today, and still the same today. Tomorrow. But the church don't believe that. I've had people say, how, how have you been out here? I've been out here over 50 years. More than a half a century. Traveling to almost every country on the face of the earth. 
Never been anywhere the blind didn't see. Never been anywhere the mutes didn't, didn't speak and hear. Never been anywhere that cancers didn't dry up. Some of them fell off and some of them were dried up and some are healed and by miracles and some are recovered. Like 400 mutes in that school. God's still that same God. He's not somebody it used to be. Well, if we get back to Africa this year, which we plan to, why don't you get your passport and, and, and go over and see for yourself? We win a country over here that, that, that they say now uh, that we're hardly nobody believes in God in this country. It's down to 90% don't believe in this country right now, according to the report. And it's getting worse all the time. We're almost, we're not a Christian nation no more. We used to be called a Christian nation. We're as far as Christian nation as a Martin gets lost and don't know where his gourd's at. We don't know where our gourd's at. How many know that? We're in a mess. And we ain't doing nothing about it. Church is going to be having meeting this weekend and, and it won't be a soul baptized of the Holy Ghost. There won't be a blind eye open probably all over America hardly this year unless there's some little hole in this church way out in the, in, the, uh, in the woods somewhere out on the, uh, off limit. Baptist people don't even believe in it no more. Methodist people don't even baptize no more. God didn't say repent and be sprinkled. <laughs> but we don't care what the Bible said. You know it's the truth. We don't care what the Bible said. No wonder God ain't confirming. The Bible said confirming the what? The word. I've had people say, Brother John, how can you be out here 50 years and over 50 years and God still be using you. I said, because I preach the word, I try to live the word, and God confirms the word Amen. with signs following. <laughs> Them that believe, God wants you full of the Holy Ghost Amen. and full of power. Yeah. He said these signs not just follow the preacher, but to them that believe. Yes, and that's what I hope today. I hope something comes out of this horn afresh from God that you're anointed today, not just with the oil, but with the Holy Ghost too. Yes. And with power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And Jesus turned in and 14 John, the works that I do, you do them. And more, greater, more. I've done more works in Christ through him because he didn't have the liberty that I have. I've traveled over 200 countries. He was only in a, a, a 18 or 20 mile area. Jesus never went no more in that in a 20 or 18 mile area in all his life when he was here uh, when he took pulpit and recognized. Now we don't know about that the time we don't know where he was. A lot of people, you know, history has him in India. History has him uh, in a lot of parts of the world. That a man called himself Jesus was in New Delhi and other parts of the world during that time that we know where he was after he was that little 12 year old boy we know what happened to him till one day he, he, he came out of Nathos raising the dead healing the sick there was an 18 or 20 year space after he was family and him called him, you know, uh, witnessing to all them people. We don't know what happened to him after that. But I'm sure he wasn't sitting off somewhere smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe he was somewhere uh, doing something for God. History has him a lot of places. 
Thank you, Jesus. But we know at 12 years old, he, he astounded the dignitaries. He astounded the educated. They said, where did this little fella get this wisdom among them Sadducees and Pharisees? He had them confounded with the knowledge he had because he was a God man. His name is still God. He's still a God man. He's a God man at the right hand of the Father. <laughs> How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How many wants to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil in it. But God was with him. 